Hello everybody and welcome back to On The Spot STEM. So today we're going to be doing 2019 Yusuko Silver from the February contest. We're going to be doing problem 3 which is called The Great Revegetation. If you've already read this problem, skip to the time indicated in this video or click the link in the description. A lengthy drought has left Farmer John's and pastures devoid of grass. However, with the rainy season arriving soon, the time has come to revegetate. In Farmer John's shed, he has two buckets, each with a different type of grass seed. He wants to plant grass in each of his end pastures, choosing exactly one type of grass to plant in each. Being a dairy farmer, Farmer John wants to make sure he manages the somewhat particular dietary needs of his M cows. Each of his M cows has two favorite pastures. Some of his cows have a dietary restriction that they should only eat one type of grass consistently, which means that those two pastures have the same type of grass. Other cows have a very different dietary restriction, and they have to eat different types of grass. So Farmer John wants to make sure that those fields have different grass types. And we want to find how many different ways Farmer John can plant grass in his N pastures. So in our input, we're given N and M, both of which are limited by 10 to the 5th. And each of the next M lines contains a cow, starting with the first character, S or D, S representing that the next two fields have to have the same type of grass, D representing that the next two fields have to have a different type of grass, and the t next two numbers are just which fields that we're talking about. And we want to output the number of ways Farmer John can plant grass in his N pastures. And we want to write our answer in binary. So that's kind of strange. Yusuko doesn't usually require us to write in binary, right? So this gives us a clue that we need to continually multiply by 2. So we're just going to be counting how many times we multiply by 2. Now, let's take a look at the sample case to maybe help us get some idea. So we have three fields, field one, field two, and field three. So that's one, two, and three. So let's just say field one has grass type one. Well, since from the input data, S12 means that one and two have to be the same, two also has to have type one. And since 2 and 3 have to be different, 3 has to have a different type. Let's just say it's grass type 2. So this is one possible arrangement of how Farmer John can plant grass in each of his three fields. But we have to also remember the other case where instead of having grass type 1 in field 1, it's grass type 2, which means that we just need to multiply by 2 because there are two different types of grass seeds. So we just need to multiply by 2 for here. So that's simple. We multiply by 2 for this case right here. It doesn't really give us any insight. Well, let's see what happens when we increase the number of fields we have. So let's say we increase it to like 6 or something. So here, let's draw 3 more fields right here, running out of room. 4, 5, and 6. So let's just say that 4 and 5 had to be the same. And if they were different, uh, well, it's basically a similar story. But what you see here is that 4, if we set 4 as having grass type 1, then 5 also has to have grass type 1. But if you look at this, 4 does not depend on 1, 2, or 3. And 4 does not depend on 6. It only depends on 5. And we can do a similar thing for 6. 6 only depends on itself. So what we see here is we've essentially established three groups here. We have one group that contains one, two, and three. We have another group that contains four and five. And we have another group that contains only field six. So if you look at group two, you can also see that if four was two, then there would be another case where five is also two would work. So then you would just need to multiply by two for this case because there are two possible ways we can put the grass seeds. And similarly, for 6, we just need to multiply by 2. So if you play around a little bit and play around with the test cases a little bit, you can find that if you have a set of fields that depend on each other, and if you set one field as having the first type of grass, there's exactly one way that we can put the grass types in the other fields that it's connected to. And the fields that it isn't related to at all, they can be another type. 
So what we basically need to do is multiply by two for each of the groups that we have. So how will we do that? Well, to me, that sounds a lot like flood fill. So flood fill basically means that you see what one is connected to, one is connected to two, which means that once you set one as having one type of grass, you go, you move on to two. Since two hasn't been checked, we can move on to two and flood fill from there. So when we go to two, we can check its neighbors, which are one and three. Well, since one has already been checked, we already put a one in there. We just need to check three and so on. Standard flood fill. But we quickly reach a problem because what happens when we start doing four? Do we want to do one again? Well, technically, yes. But when we're debugging, it kind of be hard to determine if four was really connected to one or not, or if it was its own separate thing. So what I did instead is I changed this to three. And I changed this to three, of course, because four and five have to be the same. So in the first group, I would have the numbers one and two. The second group, I would have the numbers three and four. Four is if it was different from the first field. And for the third group, I would do five and six. And I would change this to five, of course, and so on. So what we have here are three groups that we can easily find which field has to be the same or different types of grass of whatever. And each of the three groups aren't related to each other. For instance, if I changed field one to be type two grass, then field six wouldn't be any different. So for each time we multiply by two, we just add a zero to the end of each number. So that's basically an overview of what we want to code. So let's see what this looks like in real code. So in here, we just have our standard input, our print writer, our buffered writer, and so on. And we inputted n and m, and we add, and we had arrays of length m of the types of things that we're going to store. And you see that we're going to input this by doing sc.next here sc.next int minus one here because we want it to start from zero all the way to n minus one because we don't want to have an out of bounds exception right here. Let's see what we have to do here. So since we already have our input, we need to find a way to do flood fill. But first, since n and m are really, really big, they're 10 to the fifth. For every n, we don't want to look through every single m and see what we have to search. We want to shorten what we want to do by sorting ahead of time what a certain field is connected to so we can save a whole lot of time. So to do this, let's create a class called Edge. So this class will have a private int node, which means that it's a certain other field that the field that we're looking at in particular is connected to. And we have the Boolean same, which means that it either has to be the same type of grass or a different type of grass. And over here we have our constructor. So to store for each field what other fields it's connected to, let's make an array of array lists of edges. So over here we have our array list of edges, and now let's initialize each of them. So now that we've initialized all of them, we need to add them for every single connected edge that we have. So let's look back at the sample case, which contains, I believe, s12. Well, first we need to deal with that s. So if si dot equals s, then we do one case, and else we do a different case. So what we do here is we do adjacent, that's our adjacent array that stores every single field one field is connected to. And we can do favorites one zero first dot add because we're adding an edge to this. So we would add a new edge favorites i1 true because it's an s so that means it has to have the same type of grass. So now we just copy this, paste it here, change this to one, 
change this to zero. And that adds the other way around. So we can both go from the first variable to the second one and have the same type of grass. Or we could go from here to this one. Now we can do the same thing for if s of i equals d, but we just change this into false. So now we've added every single edge. So in flood fill, we have to have an array that stores what we're putting in each of the fields. So let's do that right here. And let's initialize grass right here. So now we want to go through each of the fields to test to see what types of grass we can put in. So now that we have our array, we want to start to fill it for our flood fill, of course. So let's just go through each of them. So we want to see if it's not equal to zero or not, because if it's equal to zero, then it's good to check. But if it's not, then we've already checked it and we don't want to waste time doing that again. So we won't check it. So if grass i equals zero, then we can do our flood fill function on i. Okay, so now we need to define what our flood fill function is. So we have our arguments in index because that's all we really need. Actually, this should be void. So what we want to do in flood fill is continually update what the grass thing should be. Well, first of all, we need a counter to store which grass we're on right now. So we add a counter variable here, and we initialize that counter variable as being 0. Since we're filling the first field with 1 or 2, we want to make grass i equal to 2 times counter plus 1. And after this entire flood fill thing is done, we just do a counter plus plus to record how many different types of groups we have. So now that we have grass i, we can start doing our flood fill. So let's do a for each loop for each edge e in the adjacency of index, which means that we're checking all the nodes that are adjacent to whatever index that we have here. Let's just set int v equals e dot node, because that's the node that we want to check. So now here's the part where it gets a little bit complicated. Because what we're checking in the flood fill can either be an odd or even number, we don't really know if we should plus one or not. Because if we just set it as plus one, then what happens when this is two? Well, it's going to go to three, which means that it says that fields with type two and type three are somehow connected to each other or related to each other, which is not true. So we need to check if grass index is odd or even. And not only do we need to check that, but we also need to check if the other, ver the other field has to be the same or different types of grass than this one. So we need another if for this. So now we have what we want to do for each of the different cases. We want to make sure that what we fill next isn't already filled with another number. So we want to check if grass of v is 0 or not. Because if grass of v was 0, then we're good to go. We can start checking there. But if it wasn't 0, that means we've already checked that. And we don't need to. So we're not going to check it. So if grass v is 0, we can set grass v equals grass of index because they have to have the same types of grass they have to have the same number of course and then of course we have to flood fill v and let's do the same thing for each of these things but we have to be careful for when e dot e dot same is not true if it was odd, if grass index was odd, that means that grass of v, if it was different from whatever index was, it would have to be at plus 1. For example, if grass index was 1, then grass v has to be 2. Similarly, for this, grass v has to be grass index minus 1. Because if grass index was 2, we can't have grass v as 3 because that would make it way too confusing. So we just make grass v as being grass index minus one. And of course, we call flood fill every time. Oh yeah, and I forgot the if grass v is zero or not. So let's just add that real quick. There we go. Sorry about that. But what happens if we reach a contradiction? So like, what happens if one and two had to be different, two and three had to be different, and three and one had to be different? Well, then we have a contradiction right here. So we need a way to check with that. 
Now, I don't know if the test cases actually contain contradictions or not, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So we can add a Boolean called impossible. So we initially set it equal to false, which means that if it's false, then we, if it's false, then if it's true, so we initially set it equal to false because if we find a contradiction, we can set it equal to true, which means that this is impossible, and we can just skip directly to print zero at the end. So we need a way to check in our flood fill whether or not it is impossible or not. So I'll just add that right now and I'll explain it to you. Okay, now if you're wondering why I have an error here, it's because I didn't make this static. So let me do that real quick. So I'll explain this. So if we check this right here, field index and field V, well then, if it wasn't equal to zero, we've already checked field V, but we find out that field V and field index are different, that's impossible, right? Because we've already checked that that edge means that they have to be the same type of grass. So that's impossible. Now, if the edge says that it had to be different, if the two types of grass was the same, that would be impossible. And we do the same thing for the other two cases. So now we finished our flood fill function. So we need to add impossible here. If impossible was true, we could easily just break out of this for loop so we don't need to check anything else. So to determine what we want to output, well, first we need to see if it's impossible or not. So if it's not impossible, that's our main meat of our code. And if it's impossible, we can just pw.println0 because there's, whoops, pw.println0 because there's zero possible cases that we can do. But if it's not impossible, we just want to see what counter is because when counter starts at zero and every time we finish one group, it adds. So if there were three total groups, counter would become three. That means that we just wanna add the counter amount of zeros. So since we're gonna be adding zeros a whole bunch of times, I use this new class called string builder because concatenating strings might be too slow and you don't wanna take that chance. So let's just set string builder sb equals new string builder and sb dot append one in quotations so now for every counter every number less than counter we just sb dot append zero and when we want to print it we just do pw dot print ln of sb dot to string and that returns whatever this is as a string and of course we need to close pw so now we have everything just to recap on what we did we created a new class called edge which contains for each field the field that it is connected to and if it's the same or different type of grass then we made an array list of edges so we can easily find out, we can save a lot of time instead of looking through all M types of paths that we can take. Then we create, we added each of the edges here. Next, we had our flood fill function with our counter right here, counter equals zero, and we add a counter every time we finish a flood fill. So we set grass i equals two times counter plus one, and we did our flood fill function. So for each edge in there, we checked if the grass index was odd or not. And then we checked if it had to be the same type of grass or not. And then we checked if we'd already checked the field with index V already. And we also checked if it was impossible or not. So next, we just appended a bunch of zeros using our string builder and we can print out the solution. 